China is now able to fully NSFR compliant delivery of gold priced in the, at the PM fixes. That's what they're capitalizing on. Now, Andrew, there's been a lot of talk about China opening up uh, easier access for customers to actually buy gold. Uh, I know that you have some very good contacts there. Uh, this is a big deal. Can you just talk on this? Yes, Shane. This is another bullish for gold driver, and all of them are coming to a head at once. Last week, completely missed by the mainstream media, the PBOC took the next important step to encourage a wider, less wealthy section of Chinese citizens to purchase gold and silver for that matter. And the PBOC opening up the facility to convert RMB cash savings held in the bank accounts of people to be converted into physical gold with a click of the mouse. But as we saw back in 2010, the PBOC also is sending a message to all global central uh, liquidity providers that they're going to protect the value of these gold positions. Now, this freshly introduced gold purchasing savings program advises clients to make regular monthly purchases with the expected return on these investments derived solely from gold price appreciation. Now, this once again sends a clear message that the gold price is going to rise from around current levels. Uh, this is the next leg of a multi a multi-decade incentivized gold purchase call to Chinese citizens. Now, the last time China incentivized citizens to buy gold bullion was directly after they removed controls on uh, precious metals. That was back in 2010. And we all remember when state-owned China Central Television began openly advertising gold uh, on mainstream media, uh, on mainstream television, uh, they, that was combined alongside the erection of house-sized billboards to encourage its growing middle class, in that instance, to buy gold as an investment. Now, the physical um, gold spigot is actually being opened up to absolutely everyone. Now, we had sent a message. I mean, what, what, what this has done it, it is, is the PBO see, is saying, and, and listen to this message, they have a plan to enrich its citizens, but as they did in 2010, is also now sending a message that they will protect the gold price from a collapse. Now, a few bucks here and there is irrelevant. But for reference, gold was benchmarked in London at $1,100 in 2010. When this, this is when the advertising was first undertaken. And by no coincidence, at no time since then has the gold price traded below that level, even though we've had people proffering $500 to $700 gold after, after they moved in to do this. In fact, since then, especially into uh, a Western rigged paper centric price dip, like we're seeing today, we regularly see Shanghai gold trading uh, prices trade at plus or minus $50, a $50 premium to spot gold. In fact, four nines gold rose to $2,064 today, $74 higher than paper gold. Is it any wonder that we're evidencing such a large inflow of COMEX gold price, COMEX price gold into the deliverable spot market? It's being drained, guys. Whose price do you think will win? The paper price or the physical price? So now we see the next leg of this multi-decade plan to enrich its citizens with the PBOC now moving the focus to include hundreds of millions of smaller clients who currently have little or no exposure to gold. Now it also tells us that the PBOC is considering the current gold price as undervalued and is once again preparing to protect these millions of purchases from a, a major price decline. So why did the PBOC wait till now? Really, the short answer is following gold become a Basel III compliant uh, first tier asset. On the 1st of January, 2023, the PBOC have sufficient now control of the physical markets to underpin and capitalize on price declines. 
You want to give it to me in paper? We'll take it in physical. And with the liquidity providers now forced to also be NSFR compliant, it's made the conversion of Western denominated paper gold into physical gold bullion a seamless, frictionless operation. So what has to be appreciated is it's not just, uh, you know, it's not just paper gold, sa paper gold savings scheme. This physical gold can be withdrawn from the Shanghai exchange on a T plus zero basis, i.e. immediate basis, illustrating these purchases constitute real bullion held in the name of each client's um, personal account. Now, given the fresh retail demand also competes with PBOC and BRICS plus central bank demand uh, present at every London fix, at the margin, that's the balance between the paper and the offsetting NSFR compliant physical demand, the scale of this additional physical gold demand should not be underestimated. And to give an idea of that scale, China's population is currently 1.5 billion people with the majority banked. And the top five Chinese banks have over 103 trillion in assets which is about six point, right now we're at 6.93 CNY to one, that's about $14.86 trillion in assets. And while gold is already a, in strong demand at current Western dinner determined gold prices, opening up and providing easier access for millions of smaller bank clients to access these freshly rolled out gold saving schemes, at the margin again, this fresh physical demand will bolster and compete for bullion into an already strong global physical marketplace, which is all that is needed to drive the offer to sell bullion higher. It's also not a coincidence. We covered this before, that China has openly stated they are preparing their citizens for war. China is a military enemy of America, and they have openly stated that they uh, that they're preparing the citizens for war, and when combining how much gold is estimated to be held by the PBOC and its citizens, we covered this once before. It's about forty five thousand tons, really realistically, uh, based on uh, of unencumbered gold. Should we add that? Uh, plus. Uh, plus, it's linked. Uh, then, of course, it's linked to aggregated Russian central bank holdings. I mean, look, pulling the trigger on these holdings will will force a real physical price to emerge out of the Fed's ashes. I don't include the BIS and the first tier banks who are already gearing up, fully anticipating a gold price revaluation. The trapped Fed is not. So, previous to Basel III compliance, the loco London spot fix was only an indicative price. And while it has always been possible to lock in a spot for an exchange gold price T plus two delivery obligation, following that before Basel III, a bilaterally negotiated price well above this spot price still had to be agreed. The larger the order, the larger the premium, enabling the real physical to paper price, uh, market price to be hidden. And this smoke and mirrors illusion enabled the chart painted price dislocation from the real physical market supply demand fundamentals to be kept within the parameters of the casino's rule book for the last 50 years. Namely, the house wins 95% of the time and the specs win 5% of the time. Now this all changed on the 1st of January. Now an undeliverable paper diluted gold futures price can utilize the backdoor EFP mechanism to convert this paper position into a fully compliant deliverable spot gold position in London and enable this bullion to jump out of the LBMA CME ring fence, draining this physical from the rig casino. So with the game changed and the non-sticky speculators, they nearly really needed to wake up to this along with the integrated BRICS cross settlements geared to the SGE gold price, China is now able to fully NSFR compliant delivery of gold priced in the, at the PM fixes. That's what they're capitalizing on.